Hey guys, it's me, Romy. So yes, this is the finally the last recap for the Real Housewives of uh, Atlanta, season eight, episode twenty-one, Secrets Revealed. So we learn. Look, I'm a little upset because I feel like there were certain lackluster episodes that could have incorporated uh, this information instead of uh, going and giving us one extra episode with a lot of the stuff. Because a lot of the stuff that was revealed to us gave us the context as to why certain things occurred. Because like all, all reality shows where we're trying to figure out, that's the fatal flaw of reality shows. We don't get to see enough of what we really should be seeing. And as a result... We're just going based off of uh, the information that's available to us. Meaning that, for example, we're trying to figure out, does it seem like Sheree feels a certain way about Kim and we just don't know why? Well, that's answered on here. Are we trying to figure out why Kim and um, Kenya had such issues because it felt like it had to be something else? Well, it occurred here. How does Cynthia really feel about Peter uh, going and doing what he did with that woman on the tape, and the fallout. Well, we actually see it on here. Some of the really important stuff, we finally see it on here, and it actually felt authentic. It didn't feel like, okay, it was pause, uh, check the lighting, camera time. No, it felt like, oh crap, this is some BS, and we're a part of it. Now, excuse me. We jump right into this, where we, we start off where it's essentially about Kim. The first, like, 8 to 12 minutes are about Kim. And it's about Kim going with Ken, with Portia and Phaedra to get a makeover. Because they feel like we're going to make Kim our project. By making Kim Fields our project, we will bring her into the group, make her feel more comfortable, make things just flow better. Because right now it's not. Kim isn't participating. She you know, just felt like she lost herself. So we're going to help her out. So they go and give her a uh, Manny, Penny, Petty, Penny however you say it, whatever, and you're just like, you know, Kim, oh, and side note, I love uh, Phaedra and Portia's relationship this season, because they're just so fun, carefree, loose, see goosey it's great, and after the nail appointment, they take him to the, um, to Portia's Go Naked campaign, or launch party, whatever you want to say, and they're just giving Kim some new lingerie, and Kim was open and receptive to it. She enjoyed it. I'm like, this is the Kim Fields we wanted to see on TV, and it actually occurred. Why didn't we get to see that? Why didn't we get to see that? Because that's some BS. Now, it flips over to another storyline we actually wanted to see, how Cynthia really felt about Peter and what he did, because they kind of played it off as, okay, you know, he's just there, he's just here. No, their relationship has real issues. Peter's in North Carolina, Cynthia's here in Atlanta, and remember, Cynthia doesn't really want to be there in Atlanta, she wants to be in New York. We all know that, we knew that from the jump. She was only there because their family and their businesses were supposed to jump off in Atlanta, but Peter had other plans, and so Cynthia had to follow suit. Now, with their relationship kind of breaking down, it's this situation of uh, Peter... Peter going and doing what he did on tape, and... The fallout from that, Cynthia's like, you know what, Peter's really messy. I don't think that he cheated, but as far as how I feel about him at this moment in our relationship, I don't know. And that's what she's just telling to Mallory. Peter's talking with Todd. He's discussing that's not important. What is important is Peter takes Noel out, and he takes Noel to go just to um, the salon for to get their nails, their feet done. And Noel, I love... See... No, what the kids on these show on this show, for example, they are so bright. I know Noel's what, like 14, 16, whatever, but still, they are very mature. They actually kind of remind me of me uh, when I was a little bit younger, just in general. Because if you wanted the truth, I would have said exactly how these kids did, and that's why adults loved me because it was like talking to an adult, but you weren't offended because it was a kid. So you are able to receive the information better. Uh, more open to receiving the information. Now, Noel just told Peter, I don't think that you cheated on my mom. I'm like, okay, that's open to debate. But I do think you're messy. You know how you are when you drink. You're what, 50, 50, 50 going on 50, whatever it is. And you went and did what you did on camera. Well, just in general, you know that's sloppy. You know that doesn't look right. 
And so that's my issue with you. I'm disappointed that that whole situation occurred, period, because you should know better. I'm like, there we go. There we go. And after that, like I said, Cynthia and Peter are talking, and Cynthia is just saying how she loves her some Peter, but at the end of the day, they have to reevaluate the relationship and uh, how things are going to go from now on because she's not sure if he is really the right person for her. Essentially, all the stuff that we already knew, all the stuff that we already knew. Peter was like, I'm not giving up. We're five years in. Cynthia's so just like, if, you know, once I'm done, I'm done. So we'll see how this all works out. And I think at this point, Peter is in South Carolina, North Carolina and Cynthia has moved to New York or something like that. So I'm like, okay, we'll see how long this lasts. Season nine, season nine, big changes coming for season nine. Hopefully let's act some of these women and bring on some new people. All right. Remember, please like, comment, subscribe. Aside from that, you have uh, the ladies come together. And when I say the ladies, I mean Shamia, Portia's mom, uh, Candy, and Portia. Portia is at this speaking engagement for this high school. And Portia does a great job. Portia is very positive and uplifting with these children. And of course, the children are really excited to see her. Because at first, they were like, Portia Williams. Because this is this very vague description. It was like beautiful... Um, driven, sassy, whatever. Very general. Once Portia came out, the kids were like, oh, it's like, ah. I mean, they were going off for her. So shout out to Portia. See, that's one of the things that people kind of forget. It's about your personality because it doesn't matter how old you are. As long as, let's just be real, as long as you look good and you're a fun personality, have a fun personality, then you can cre uh, relate to a younger demographic. And that's what Portia has been able to do. Portia's in her 30s, and I think, I'm not sure if it's early 30s or late, mid 30s or what have you, but it might be like close to 40, actually, if I'm not mistaken. If I'm not mistaken, and yet she still reaches those teen kids. So Portia will be just fine out here in these streets. But again, shout out to her for just uh, her growth, her development, how everything has gone so far because she was just saying how in school she was bullied and she wanted to encourage these kids and in life and in general, things are going to happen your way. You're going to have people who don't like you. You're going to have hard situations you have to deal with. At the end of the day, love yourself first. Put yourself, well, put God first. Um, you are important. You are special. And you can handle anything else as long as you keep that in your heart. Let today be the first day of the rest of your life. I'm like, shout out to Portia. Shout out to Portia. What movie did you get that from? But okay. All right. Uh, Cynthia's talking with Mallory and Marlo. Again, I'm not sure why Marlo was just in for like, what, three episodes and then she was gone. Cynthia is concerned because she knows she has to tell Noelle about her fight with... Uh, her fight with Portia and she's trying to think how can she spin this so that she can talk about how, the importance of you know keeping your composure and your demeanor and all that stuff and that it's not okay even though she did it type of thing because she's never done something like this before so I mean considering she's was in the entertainment field for so long and modeling and all that and she's never had a physical altercation shout out to her and then she comes on Real Housewives and has one it's like what? <laughs> what? <laughs> but Anyway, so she goes and speaks with Noel. She brings her a new phone. I'm like, okay, usual distraction. Give you something nice right before you go and deliver some bad news. And she's telling Noel, you know what? I lost myself for a moment and I got into a physical altercation. It was a fight. I was defending myself. You know, I, I was defending myself. Okay, she was defending herself. But Noel quickly was like, yo, mom, mom, how old are you? Mom, how old are you? How are you going and getting into fights at your age? Like, what's really good? What's really going on? And it's like, I don't know what issues you currently have now, but it, that's not okay. That's not cool. You can't be just putting your hands on people regardless of the situation. She was like, of course you have to defend. Yeah, defend yourself. That's all cute and whatever. But if you had any type of power or control in the situation, that wouldn't have been an issue. And I'm just like... <laughs> I'm just like... Shout out to these kids, regardless of what you think about their parents. All these kids on the show, Phaedra's children, Cynthia's child, 
um, is one of those where you have to watch out for her because she has a lot of sense and she's willing to, because she's very open with her mom, she has that type of relationship, so you don't know what's going to come out of her mouth, so it won't necessarily be constructive, it just might be mean or in some cases rude, but all these kids are very bright and make sense, so shout out to their parents regardless of what you think of their parents. Now, we move on past from that, and Cynthia get, and Phaedra gets proposed to. Say, Phaedra is joining this, I guess, established funeral home um, or company, and the guy literally hands down the key to his father's or his parents' um, parents' coffins, and I'm just caskets, and I'm just thinking to myself, and he's bending down on one knee, knee as if. Uh, he's proposing to her and I'm like Lord Jesus is this what they do in the south is this what they do in the south did someone say lights camera action and it was like okay this is a Phaedra scene let's make it melodramatic let's make it soap opery like what type of BS is this after that we have Candy with Todd and she's at Dr. Jackie this is when she starts her niche her initial in vitro um dissemination process and so at this point she has a little release party and it's like, guess what? Candy's pregnant or she's at least in the process of becoming pregnant because that's what it really is. It, ha it takes a moment before it sticks. And so Todd goes and he gives her this baby shower. And I'm like, you know, shout out to Todd because I don't feel like we give Todd enough credit in general, especially on this show. And Todd has dealt with Mama Joyce, has dealt with the whole Burr's family, and he's still there. That says a lot. After that, we have Duke and, uh, what's her name? Portia. Duke and Portia are going house hunting. Remember Duke? He was a person at the beginning of the season that we were like the 24-year-old 24, 24 guy who was at the beginning of the season and Portia was saying how, you know, she feels like even though he's young, we haven't been together for that long, but I really feel like Things could be moving forward. He handled my friends and family very well who are grilling the hell out of us. So I think we have a relationship. Fast forward. No, you don't. Duke ghosted Portia real fast. After all it took for him was to get on camera with her and realize, you know what? I don't want to be a part of this BS. I'm out. <laughs> I was like, damn, Portia, damn. Apparently, we see a little bit more into Kenya's dating life because, again, we didn't see that. And I'm like, damn, how many dates has she gone on that we never just saw on um, TV? Kenya meets up with this guy named Kevin. Kenyan? Kenyan. <laughs> Kevin kind of looks like, just to give you an example, looks like Walter. He really does look like Walter. Walter with a more positive, upbeat demeanor. But he is sex crazed. He takes Kenya to this like casual, it's like pl play date, literally play date, because they have this little area where they could throw balls, whatever the game was. And Kenya goes dressed in this really nice, uh, tight dress. And not like tight hose dress, but just tight, close to the skin dress. And. He was just like, oh yeah, you overdressed, but you looking good. And again, the whole time while they're eating, he was just sitting on Kenya and was like, all right, so we're going to do this, we're going to do that. You're going to give up these goods, you're going to give up that goods. And I'm just thinking to myself, slow it down, man. I'm glad you're very interested in Kenya, but you need to, need to, you need to really need to. <laughs> I knew that wasn't going to work out. Afterwards, we have, so glad that Matt came to the situation and, um, Here's the thing, we have Kim Fields and she was in the uh, bus with her son, with her kids, and this is where we finally get to see her older son's personality, I believe he's eight, and I'm upset because I'm like, this is what we wanted to see, we hear him and you know, he's making jokes about the horses and all this stuff, and I'm like, okay, I get it now, I get it, I get it, I get it. Why couldn't we see this on camera? Why couldn't we see your kid's personality on camera more? Because it's not like they weren't filming. And it's not her fault. Bravo. I feel like it wouldn't have hurt for us to just see him like that. Because in all the scenes that we see him, it's like comparing him to um, Aiden, who's younger. Where Aiden was just more reserved and calm in social settings. And not fidgeting like, like uh, Kim's older son. 
and he just always seemed like he had a little attitude or was irritated, even though he's a kid and he's around all these adults and he's probably bored. And my whole thing is like, we don't, we didn't get to see that other side to his personality. And I feel like that was a disjustice to him. If I was Kim, I would have been upset. I know she probably didn't think much of it, but that was just a little thing for me. Another thing is where Sheree, now I was trying to figure out why it seemed like Sheree felt a certain way about Kim. Uh, now I know why. Kim talked about how she essentially told Kenya that she wasn't putting up with this, she wasn't putting up with that, and she was just over the situation between, uh, and she let Kenya be known. Sheree goes and tells Kenya, and Kenya's like, that's not what happened at all. This is, mind you, Sheree and, um, Portia are sharing a room together while in D.C., and this is where the conversation breaks out. Well, not sharing a room together, but you know what I mean. And I just feel like, okay, I get where... First, I'm glad Sheree's back because Sheree was always that person that would always go and run around and it's like, okay, don't tell Sheree anything you don't want the other person to know because Sheree is like, if you tell me what you just said, that means that I am allowed to go and say to whoever I want to. That is Sheree's mantra. That is her way of thinking. That is her way of life. So just always keep that in mind. Now, afterwards, like I said, Sh uh, Sheree was like, all right, we need to have a sit down. So Sheree has Kenya, herself, and Kim all sit down and sh uh, they talk. And here's what basically happens. <sighs> Kenya's like, oh, Kim, you're always so judgy. You're always so judgy. Kim is just like, whatever do you mean? Sheree's just like, no, I agree with Kenya, you know. You're so judgmental and you're passive aggressive. We know Kim is passive aggressive. We already know that. We know that Kim is more so. She tells you how you feel in uh, indirectly. And for this group, that isn't going to work out again. That's just why she wasn't. Another reason why she wasn't a good fit. But that's all it was. So that was it. That was really it. Again, now I understand why it seemed like Sheree really didn't like Kim that much. Because she really didn't. So it wasn't just, she just didn't like him much in general. So that's why it was like everything else almost seemed like she was attacking him. Almost. Uh, Alright, please like, comment, subscribe. Like I said, subscribe, look at all the other stuff that I review. Because this is over and I, my review for the Potomac Ladies will be up sometime in the morning. And uh, I do reviews for a myriad of shows, so... Like I said, just subscribe and you'll see it all. Shows, pop culture topics. I haven't done those recently. I have to get back into that. Been a little tired slash lazy. But I need to get back into that. Alright. Alright.